Hey, you're welcome. In our second part of Uhu's Jugger tutorials, I would like to show you some nice shield moves. In fact, I would like to show you the basics of the stance you can use with the shield, how to hold your lovely pomfe, and how to hold your shield. Well, after the first part was quite a snowy affair, you could say, um, I decided to have it a bit more comfortable on the fire and with a nice whiskey. And I decided to do the solitary parts first because they are most crucial. If you have done sports fencing, for example, or boxing, you might know that, yes, just learning how to walk is most crucial when you are sports fencing or boxing. And I think the same thing applies to shield play. Um, there are many similarities there, in my view. Let me say before we start that this style of shield playing is just my personal style. So it is not the perfect style. And there are many other shield players out there who are doing a fantastic job, of course. There is, for example, the so-called Spanish style, you could say. And the Spanish style is a faster style. It has more to do with running and jumping and evading your opponent's pomfa through speed. It's becoming more and more popular. I don't know whether it's actually better, that you have to try for yourself, but I do, don't want to show you that right now. I would like to stick to the traditional <laughs> German style, you could say, um, uh, which is more slow paced, which is more yeah, maybe focused, you could say, but which can also be a bit more challenging to learn, because, as I said, first we will learn walking. So, welcome to the second part of Uhu's Jagger tutorials and uh, when we are coming to the third part we will focus on duels and dual techniques. For now we have solitary play and the basic stance. Let's start! <laughs> most important things, I think, when playing the shield is the basic stance, the way to walk. If you have done sports fencing or even boxing, then you might have heard that walking, moving, is one of the main, most important aspects, the main aspects of the sport. You sort of have to learn walking anew. And when I learned sports fencing, uh, I was taught an easy way how to teach yourself uh, the basic stance. And this easy way is like this. You take your feet in one line. So this foot comes here and just points up to the other one. Now, this is a good distance for your feet. Now you are drawing out your foot 90 degrees, some an L you could say. And now you are just going down with your body, holding your body upright. So like this. And when you are going down, Check out how much you have to go down until it feels good. So like this. It should feel like a feather in the feet. And now to check your stance, you can just jump up a bit and see. Okay, that's good. Fine. Almost 90 degrees or 90 degrees exactly is best. I know that Kendo, for example, has a little less than 90 degrees. But for my way, you could say, I recommend this for training. So this is the basic stance. Important is you are facing your opponent not with your whole body like this and trying to smash him, but you are facing him with the side. Think that you have some EP here in your hand trying to fence against your opponent. But in fact you will have your shield here to protect you. Now this is your basic stance. Go down a bit that it feels good and going down is important to be mobile. If you want to go to your opponent in this direction, then you go like this. This foot comes first, this follows up. When you go backwards, this foot uh, starts like this, and this follows up. And as you can see, when I'm going here, the distance between my feet is never too small. You should not go like this. This is a frog leg stance, you could say. It's not a good idea because at this point you're unstable. You might not be able to hold yourself, while when you are in this stance, you're always stable. You have stability, you're quite fast, and you are very agile. Now, next thing is your distance to your opponent. When you're playing shield, many people go down, you will see that later, but we don't have so much range with our arm and with our short sword. To have more range, optimal range you could say, you are doing an utfop, and this goes like this, you're going with this foot here, forward, like this and you are stretching out this leg while, important, 
having this foot all time tightly on the ground. So you are sort of pushing with this foot the other foot forward without leaving the ground, like this. So hey, now you have optimum range, you could say, with your shield protecting you, still protecting you. This is your basic step, this is your attack, or this. If you have to retreat very quickly, or if your opponent is much way before you, and you have to reach him quickly, then you can do another step, and this is the Kreuzschritt in uh, German, when you're doing that step, you are in fact crossing with your feet, one over the other, and backward the same, first this foot, in this case, not this foot when you're going backwards, here yeah, like this. So this is your, your Korsch Steg, your Kreuzschritt, to go, come to go quickly uh, forward and backward. So basic step, attack step, and the Korsch, like this cross step, I could say. Good. These were the basics. All time, when you're watching your body or your navel, you could say your, your navel is running on rails the whole time. You're going like this. You're not going like this or something. Not up and down. That's unstable. Go like your navel would be railed and hold the same height with your body. Also good to mind. When I did sports fencing, we first, well, we didn't fence at first, we just went round the whole hall for, I don't know, the whole trip. It was just like this every time, so that we uh, learn us to walk anew. And I recommend to do a bit of walking training before you start your training as well, um, in addition, of course, to fencing techniques. And that brings us to the next step in this little tutorial. <laughs> Okay, now we're coming to the shield itself. How do I hold the shield with the basic stance? Now, you have the basic stance that we have seen. We know how to hold a pom for now, but how do we hold the shield? We are holding the shield not like a wall, not like this here. We are holding our shield like a roof, like this. First, you get more distance between the shield and your foot. Uh, and second, you have a bit better flexibility here than here. When someone hits you here, it's a bit strange. When you hit, uh, are hit here, it's better support for the arm. So it's more like part of your arm than when you're doing something like this. Another important thing is, when you're holding your shield, check where the ground is. Are you staying like this? Are you staying like that? How are you staying, in fact? And to check where the ground is, Sounds a bit stupid, but it's quite important. Just take your shield and try to hit the ground. And hit it so that you can hear it. Hit it hard. So you know, okay, there's the ground. You will see why that's important when we are showing dudes. So hold your shield like a roof, distance to your foot, get down with the shield. And when you're staying here, like this, then be aware that your foot here and your shoulder here will be the prime targets for your opponents. They will try to hit you on the foot, so that means when you're standing like this, try to draw the foot back, quickly, so like this. When you have a pump, you can also do a counter attack, like this. And now come the shield, down, hit. For the shoulder, often people forget where the shield is. Also try to keep in mind how high you are holding, in fact, your shield. Are you protecting your shoulder? No. Are you protecting your shoulder? Better. So hold the shield up a bit more. Go down so that you are mobile, but at the same time that you can touch the ground and parry and you have quite a good base for your shield play. You also want to train this one because that's your side parry when someone tries to hit you here. Parrying and slashing from below or from up, depends, is a very important feature. You have very much power with your shield. Don't use it as a wall to hide behind. You cannot hide behind your shield. You should use your shield as an active defense. Active meaning hit your opponent's weapon, not your opponent, but hit your opponent's pomp like this. Get it out of the way. And do something with your own weapon then, with your own pomp then. Work with your shield. Uh, just take your shield as an own gear, you could say, not just like some wall that hangs here passively. It is a part of your whole strategy. You want to move it. You want to be active with it. So much for the shield.
So we have heard that the Scholz ward, the Colts bomb, is the most important thing, of course, because you have to hit your opponents with this one. But how do you hold it, in fact? And well, there are different theories, there are different possibilities. What I prefer is uh, an easygoing style. You have that in Tai Chi, for example, in Sword Tai Chi. You are just holding your pompa with two or three fingers, like that and the other fingers are just supporting the grip. They are not a heavy grip like this, because if you use your pomfret like this, you cannot really work with it. That's a problem. When you're holding it lightly, with just some fingers, and the other fingers only as a support, then you have more possibilities. You are more agile, that's much better, and of course when you are thrusting, you can go like this. So your pomfret can glide through your hand, and you have so much more range that you can cover by it. So hold it easily, take it easy, and just, when you thrust, slide back. Therefore this one, this padding is recommended in every case, but this one is also very practical for your grip to stop your hand when it has reached the outer point of the pommel, so that you don't lose it, in fact. So if you wouldn't have that, this might happen, not very nice. Therefore we have this protection here. The other thing when you are hitting, but that we'll see in a duel, is when you hold it easily, you can also go over the defense of your opponent and go like this. So not only like that, <coughs> oh, that's it, when, here, uh, when we have a shield here, but you can sort of lose it, your pomfe, and hit him behind his defense, like that. Even over his pomfe, when he is parrying, you go over it and you hit him, even so. Well, thank you very much uh, for uh, just listening and I will enjoy this fantastic scotch whiskey which um, is best to be blended with just a tiny drop of water and the interesting thing like with Jagger is that you blend it just so much that it meets your taste perfectly. Scott.